I got an email from one of the local clubs that I am a member of, and it caught my attention. I thought, you know, that should probably be the subject of a video. The title of the email is, there's been an influx of people using their GMRS call sign, or maybe no call sign at all, on some of the amateur radio 440 frequencies in the North Texas area. And we're going to talk about that right now. All right, this may ruffle some feathers a little bit for you GMRS guys or for you guys who don't have a ham radio call sign. The point of the video is to share information. So I'm not going to come out of here pointing my finger and saying, you should do this, you shouldn't do this, you should, you should not. I'm not telling you that, but I'm going to give you my viewpoint on it. Okay, so here we go. Here we Here is the email. Now, I've, I've blocked out the gentleman who sent the email. I blocked out his name because I don't really like sharing public information on the internet. But it is come from the Bedford Amateur Radio Club, and it says influx of people using either GMRS or no call sign at all on some frequencies. So this is a pretty short email. He says, there appears to be an influx of people using either their GMRS licenses or no call sign at all on many of the 70 centimeter repeaters here lately. He's talking about 70 centimeter ham radio repeaters. This has been heard by numerous amateur radio operators all throughout the Metroplex and surrounding areas. Most of these people are totally clueless that they are operating in the amateur radio spectrum of the band. The fact that they were able to program their inexpensive handheld radio in the amateur bands leads them to believe that they can use the frequency. Okay, so first off, I got to say two things about that. Number one, I have not personally heard this. I monitor some repeaters locally. I've got two or three uh, 70 centimeter or 440 repeaters that I monitor pretty regularly. The Bedford repeater is one of the repeaters I have programmed in, into all of my radios, but admittedly, I don't monitor that repeater very often. Uh, the Bedford repeater, for those of you in North Texas, the Bedford repeater is on 442.825. I should probably monitor it more. It's got pretty good coverage over here in Grapevine, and I, every now and then I'll, I'll key it up and talk to somebody on it, but generally speaking, I'm not listening to that repeater. I have not personally heard this before, but I can totally see how this is possible. So we're going to keep reading here, and then I'm going to give you my viewpoint about it. In the past couple of weeks, I've personally heard newly licensed GMRS users throwing out their GMRS call sign asking for radio checks. Yeah, yeah, like a Brandmeister talk group, perhaps. <laughs> Today, I engage in a conversation with a GMRS user on a local repeater in the Fort Worth area, okay? So I don't know if this was actually the Bedford repeater that he's talking about or not, because he doesn't disclose that information, which is fine, no problem. He had absolutely no clue that he could not legally talk on the repeater he was on by holding a GMRS license. His response was something to the effect of, I guess I have a lot more to learn, and that pretty much ended the conversation. He mysteriously went away, so he didn't key up anymore. So I don't know how that conversation went, but okay. His final paragraph closes out, Just be aware that this is going on. Lots of kerchunking the repeaters, lots of requests for radio checks, lots of GMRS call signs being thrown around. Again, I have not personally heard this, but I'm going to be listening for it now that I've, I've got this letter. And no, it's not really surprising when there are folks like Not a Rubicon posting videos on YouTube, making statements telling folks it's pretty much okay to be on amateur radio without a license. I didn't write that. Randy, if you're watching, I didn't write that. Somebody else wrote that. So what is my take on all of that? Okay, so here goes. I've got a message to you guys who are, have a GMRS-only license, and I have a message to you guys who have a ham license. And here is my message to both of you, okay? You GMRS guys, know what you're doing before you do it, okay? So if you don't have a GMRS radio, if you have a full open transmit radio like a Baofeng or something, then just be aware where you're supposed to transmit. There's plenty of GMRS repeaters out there that you can talk on, and the license you've purchased gives you the right to talk on those repeaters or talk on Simplex, okay? It doesn't give you the right to go anywhere the radio will go. I personally think that's a dumb rule. I think if, she, if you have, not the radio part, but I think if you have a license, you should be able to talk with any radio on that frequency, but you can't. Okay, anything, the amateur radio portion of the band is anywhere from 420 to 450 megahertz. Okay, this is something you would learn by getting your ham radio license. And if you're interested in getting your ham radio license, I highly recommend you go check out hamradioprep.com. You can save a 20% discount on all of their licensing courses with the coupon code of Jason20. You can grab your smartphone right now and download their app on your Android or iOS device, either one, and the app is free. Get started studying, 
Get started taking practice tests today for free with their free app, Ham Radio Prep. And then if you purchase their license courses, it gives you an expanded explanation of things that they have and expanded explanations of answers and whatnot. So just check out Ham Radio Prep if you're at all interested in getting your Ham Radio license. And be sure to tell them thank you for supporting Ham Radio 2.0 if you guys contact them. So your GMRS radios and frequencies and repeaters are around the 462 to 467 megahertz range, which is right above the amateur radio band. Most of your Baofeng radios will go like 400 megahertz to like either 480 megahertz or sometimes like 520 megahertz. So they cover that whole range. And while you're probably just purchasing those on eBay or Amazon, that's fine. You just got to be aware that you can't transmit everywhere. People are going to say something to you, especially with your GMRS call sign. Your GMRS call sign only belongs on GMRS frequencies, which again are between 462 and 467 megahertz. It's your responsibility to know where you're transmitting. I'm not telling you not to buy the radio. I'm not telling you what radio to use or not use. Just know where you're transmitting. That's all. In addition to that, those of you with a ham radio license, here's my take on this. We should be polite to these people. We should just, hey, if you hear a GMRS call sign, which it's four letters followed by three numbers most of the time, my GMRS call sign is WRFK311. Four letters, three numbers. So if you hear that on an amateur radio frequency, just go back to the person and say, hey, buddy, I think you're on the wrong frequency or the wrong repeater. Sounds like you got a GMRS call sign. You need to go to the GMRS frequencies for that call sign. You know what? They might have a ham radio call sign and they were just saying the wrong thing because I am guilty of throwing my ham radio call sign out on GMRS repeaters just by mistake, just by sheer habit of saying KC5HWB. I've been saying that call sign for almost 30 years at this point, so I'm just used to saying it. So we should be nice to them and we should be using our own repeaters. I, I can't tell you the number of comments I get on videos where they say, oh, the repeaters around me are dead. The repeaters around me are dead. Nobody's on the repeaters around me. And my response is always the same to, to people who comment that way. I'm like, okay, how many times did you key up on that repeater yesterday or last week or last month? Are you using the repeater? Oh, I listen to it all the time. Nobody ever talks. Are you keying up the repeater? Are you talking? If the answer is no, if you say, well, I just listen and nobody ever talks, well, then you're not talking either. So are you complaining about yourself? Okay, I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty of that. Okay, so I've issued a challenge on several videos since the first of the year. I've been trying to, I did it just this morning, actually. I've been trying to practice throwing my call sign out on our local repeaters at least once a day. So on the ULIS repeater earlier, 442.900, I was I went and ran an errand earlier. I got some lunch. I threw my call sign out on the repeater. Nobody came back to me, and that's okay. But you know what? I threw my call sign out. I had a five or 10 minute conversation with my brother, who's a newly licensed ham. He got his license about a year ago. He and I talked on uh, the Ulysses repeater last weekend for about 10 minutes. And uh, after we talked, we put the radio down. About an hour later, I heard him call me again. He had, a qu had another question. And after that, we talked for another two or three minutes. So we used the repeater twice in the last three days. Okay, so throw your call sign out and get some activity going on your repeaters if you don't want people who are unauthorized to use it and if you're complaining that no one ever uses it. Now, let me say this to anybody out there at all. Okay, you say, well, I should, I should be able to use whatever I want to. If you buy a repeater, you spend your money on a repeater, antenna for the repeater, hard line, feed line, coax for the repeater. Maybe you're renting a tower site. Maybe you're paying for internet to that repeater. All the hardware costs and whatnot. Now you own that repeater and it's got your call sign on it. Whether it's ham or GMRS, same applies. Now you own that repeater and you've got your call sign on it. If someone came along and started using the repeater without authorization, what would you have to say to them? It's your repeater. You set it up to use on GMRS or you set it up to use on ham radio and someone's coming on, along and using it who shouldn't be using it, what would you have to say to that person? I think most of you, if you're honest with yourself, would probably say, well, no, we, we'd probably tell them not to use it. Well, of course you would. Why wouldn't you? You've done the work. If you're a ham, you've done the studying. You've done the testing. You've learned the material. You've done what a lot of people are just flat out too lazy to do. Okay, I'm not saying you're too stupid to do it. I never said that. But you are lazy if you're going to insist on using a ham radio repeater and not getting your call sign. No, well, you're going to find me. Now, I don't want to give my information on the internet. Give me a freaking break, dude. Pull your head out of your and realize that if you have a driver's license or a passport or an electric or water bill in your name, they already got your information, son. If you've got a YouTube channel that you've registered for, and you're commenting on this video, they already got your information. They're not going to go to the FCC to get, for, get your information. They're going to go to the IRS to get your information, which is already there, and there's a lot more of it. 
So don't give me the excuse that, oh, I don't want to put my information. Your information's already out there. Unless you just totally go off grid. And in which case, you're not watching this video. So I ain't talking to you right now, am I? So don't give me that. No, you're just being lazy. You're being lazy. You say, well, I don't have any need for a ham. Fine, fine. Then don't go get a ham radio license. Fine. Just stay the hell off the ham radio repeaters. Because it's an insult to people who have actually done the work and learned the material and went through all the steps the way they should. Now, you might throw around the term sad ham. The term sad ham was, a li was funny for, I don't know, 10, maybe 15 minutes. It was funny, and then it stopped being funny. The truth is that anybody gets called a sad ham, we just say, hey, this is the law. This is what the rules say. This is what you should be doing. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what the law says. Well, I don't care what the... Okay, fine. You don't care what the law says. Good. I'm not a, I'm not a cop. I'm not an FCC agent. I'm not an ATF agent. I don't care. You can do whatever you want to. But don't tr come and try to argue with me about what the law says, because this is what the law says. This is what the rules say. This is what the documentation says that we should and should not be doing. And I, I, I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret that most people probably don't know. Amateur radio, call signs, and the ARRL have been around a lot longer than the FCC has. Yeah, been around a lot longer. We've been segregating amateur radio spectrum, radio spectrum, and making call signs for ourselves and doing licensing classes and tests for ourselves long before the FCC ever came around. So that was a tradition from a long, long time ago. 100 years, ARRL is 100 years old this year. So it's been going on uh, a long time before FCC was around. So be respectful of other people. You don't want to do the ham thing. You don't want to do the GMRS thing. That's fine. It's your decision. No one's telling you you should or should do. I'm not telling you you should or shouldn't want to do that. But be respectful of what other people have done. I'm not going to come to your house and walk across your yard and park my truck in your front yard just for you to come out and say, why are you in my yard? Well, what, what do you care? I'm not hurting anything. You've got a driveway right next to your house. I've got a vehicle. Why can't I park in your driveway? Well, it's my property. Yeah, and amateur radio bands are amateur radio operators property spectrum property we have gone through the testing and learning to get access to those frequencies you can use gmrs frequencies you can use cb and mers and frs frequencies with no license at all you can use gmrs frequencies with just buying a license and paying for it those of us who have ham radio frequency uh licenses have gone through the steps to learn the material so that we can get access to those and guess what you can too the only thing stopping you from getting a ham radio license is you nobody else so go get a ham radio license if you want one or don't it's your decision just be aware that people may get on the frequency and ask you to to leave hopefully they do it in a polite way if you're there without a proper call sign and those of us who have call signs let's try to be nice to these people and get them involved in amateur radio because whether they know it or not they're probably going to like it if they've got a radio they've got an interest already so maybe they'll actually like it Maybe we should show them some of these great ham radio clubs that we have across the United States and across North America and get them interested in the proper use of a radio and see what kind of expanded world they have access to with an actual amateur radio license. Put a comment below. Let me know what you guys think. 73.